Welcome back to my sewing room. Today we're going to be sewing very quickly the 1950s swing style dress for the Silkstone Barbie. The reason that I'm doing this particular video today is one of my customers contacted me and was concerned about how to actually attach the skirt to the bodice section and I wanted to proof the pattern to make sure that I hadn't made a mistake and also provide her with information that would help her easily construct this outfit going forward. So this is actually the pattern cover that we're going to be working with and as you can see from the cover this swing style pattern also includes a jacket. If you're interested in seeing the construction of that jacket, please list that in the comment section below and I'll consider that for a future video. Putting videos together for patterns is really, really helpful for me and also for the customers that are buying my product. I just want you to know how much I appreciate and value your input. I do try to be responsive uh, to different requests for videos, but I have quite a list growing, um, so I will try to get to everyone's requests eventually. I appreciate your patience and your time. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the actual pattern pieces for the dress from the 1950s swing pattern. And in this case, we're just gonna be reproducing it for the Silkstone Barbie. So as you can see here, we have the front of the dress, uh, skirt portion, the back of the dress, side front, side back, and then the actual bodice section, which just consists of one piece cut on the fold, as well as two back sections. So the first step in the construction of this is gonna be to go ahead and get the darts uh, set in both the front and back sections of the bodice at the sewing machine. I took my seam ripper and just placed a small hole at the top of the dart on each pattern piece and then with my heat erasable marker I actually put the marking of where that dart's going to end. From there all I'm going to do is just stick a pin into the end of the dart and I'm going to continue to sew all the darts in both the front and back pieces of the bodice. For the next step, all I'm going to do is sew the shoulder seams together for the front and the back of the bodice. We'll take all the pieces over to the ironing board and press those seams open and the darts to the side. With the bodice lining pinned to the actual bodice over the top, the next step is going to be to go ahead and sew around the armhole openings as well as around the neck edge and down the left back opening. Now that we have all of those seams sewn, I'm just going to take my scissors and clip in towards the curved edge of the neck as well as the armhole openings and then trim those seams a little bit, turn it right side out and give it a press.
Now that we have the lining sewn to the bodice around the neck and the armhole opening, we're gonna sew the actual side seams. In order to do that, we're just gonna open the garment up and we're gonna match the right side of the bodice to the right side of the bodice, as well as the lining to the lining and sew the actual side seam. All right, now that we have the side seam sewn, you can trim into that seam allowance, and we obviously want to press that. And the next step is also going to be to turn up the lining edge a quarter of an inch and press that as well. With the bodice complete, let's get a quick fit to the doll and make sure that everything's looking pretty good. So we're gonna be using the Muffy Roberts Silkstone Barbie. So we'll just check the bodice before we actually get the skirt attached in case we need to make any adjustments. So remember we have the left back opening finished. I think it's not looking too bad on the front. Um, we have the left back opening finished. We have the lining turned up a quarter of an inch. And then this right back opening is actually going to be surged or zigzagged when we're finished. And that is going to be the placement of the actual snap. So overall, I'm pretty content with the actual fit. This pattern, as you can see on the cover here, also comes with a little jacket, which I won't be doing in this particular video. But if someone is interested in seeing that constructed, <clears throat> excuse me, please let me know going forward. And that's another video that I could possibly put out. So now that we have that fit let's set our doll to the side and finish construction of the skirt so we can get the skirt and the bodice sewn together so what i did before and off camera is i just went ahead and i pinned the side front sections to the actual front section of the skirt as well as the side back sections to the back sections of the skirt so we're going to get those couple of steps done and then we'll sew the front and the back of the skirts together at the side seams Now all we're gonna do is simply pin the front to the back at the actual side seams, and then we're gonna get those seams sewn and press all the seams of the skirt open. We have all our skirt pieces sewn together. So for the next step, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim into the curved edge of the actual waist, press all of the seams open, and then I'm gonna run a zigzag stitch along the bottom edge of the skirt, turn it up a quarter of an inch and hem it. So those are gonna be the next few things that we do.
Now that step of actually running the zigzag stitch along the hemline is completely optional and something that I just do when I finish my doll clothes. Cotton isn't gonna really ravel. You could always do um, a pinking sheer cut along the edge and then turn the hemline up if you didn't wanna do this step. I do like to have both back openings actually zigzag sewn. I just think it makes a nicer finish. So we're gonna turn that hemline up, do the top stitch for the actual hem and then we'll get the skirt attached to the bodice. All right, with the hem constructed now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach the actual skirt to the bodice. And you'll notice that the side seams are gonna match on that. On the uh, left back opening, the um, back of the skirt is gonna turn under a quarter of an inch. And on the right back opening, we're actually gonna line it up with the raw edge of the bodice. We have the bodice pinned to the actual skirt and everything looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and sew that seam now. All right, once you have the bodice sewn to the actual skirt, we're gonna press that seam up. First, you're gonna check the front to make sure everything looks pretty decent. And I think it does. So you can see that the side seam's lining up here. The darts are lining up with that front piece and everything looks pretty good. This is the side that's gonna turn in on the left back opening. So once we have this seam pressed up, we're actually gonna fold the lining down. We're gonna hand finish it to the actual seam right there. And then we're gonna sew the center back seam of the dress from the hemline to the dot as indicated on the pattern. Before I hand finish that lining to the actual seam at the waist, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a quick zigzag stitch over the raw edge of the right back opening. And that's just to make sure that that edge is finished. Now I'm just gonna grab my needle and thread and finish the waist and do the center back seam. With the lining sewn to the actual bodice on that seam, all we have to do now is just finish those final couple of steps, which includes sewing that center back seam from the hem to the dot, turning it right side out, getting a fit to our doll, putting on a few snaps, and seeing how our project actually turned out.
with the center back seam sewn, we wanna get one final fit to the doll so that we can mark the placement of the snaps. So I did put a few pins in here and I think the fit's gonna be fine. I'm gonna go off camera, add those snaps, take a few photographs of our finished product and maybe add a little bow to the center front of the dress. And we'll see how Muffy likes her new 1950s swing dress. I did want to share with you guys something that I found that's really cool and available for super cheap at Walmart to store your threads is this craft bin. So generally when I store my threads and I have a ton of them as most sewers do, I used to put them just in these kind of clear boxes from the dollar store. The problem is they start to unwind and it's really hard to sift through it and see which kind of, uh, which color you're actually looking for. So when I was looking for a solution, I came across these art supply storage units at Walmart and they're like seven bucks or something but as you can see super streamlined nice and thin you can stack them in a corner they can sit on the edge and you can see all your threads at one time so if this is something you're interested in uh, check your local, local Walmart and for less than eight bucks you can all of a sudden see exactly the threads that you're looking for so I hope this tip is helpful if you have some kind of cool storage device that you use please list that in the comment section below so that we can all go and check that out as well So here's that finished dress for Muffy Roberts, and I think she looks fantastic. It was really, really fun to sew this for her again. One thing to keep in mind when you're sewing for really small fashion dolls is that just the smallest amount of variation in your seam width can create a real big problem with the fit. So be really conscientious of the dart sizes that you take, as well as using a quarter inch seam allowance on the construction of all the doll clothes patterns that we have available. Thank you for your comments and suggestions for your encouragement and watching these videos. If you haven't any questions, please list them in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe and like button, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.